Hey guys, this is Jeff from Jeff's Basketball Gardening and Containers. Um, what I did was I already got a ton of potatoes growing, but uh, I wanted to try the, uh, with all the other, I'll show you here soon, all the other sweet potatoes I got growing. I wanted to try these uh, purple sweet potatoes I've never tried before. I've done the purple regular potatoes, not sweet ones and uh, it's very rare when you can get them without having to buy them online. So I went out and bought some. And I got a couple slips in today. I got a couple more coming of two different types. So I want to try them. So what I what I did with this container, this was a clear plastic container. Which, uh, of course, don't want to grow anything in a clear plastic container. To see the light, especially potatoes. So better in black. I mean, most of them are white, but it's better in black to use a black container. So what I do is just found some... Uh, Extra spray paint I had in the, uh, the shed behind me there and just painted it up so it just keeps some of the light away. I've got holes drilled on the back ends of each side of it and I got holes drilled on the bottom of this. And, uh, and it's already had a big crack in it from the winter time. So I'm not really worried about it. I'm going to soak it here and let it sit here. Um, but I'm not too worried about it. Uh, I'm trying to think of the right words. Any failure or anything like that because it's already... The, Things already cracked, so I just, I just put some paint on a cracked tub, and then put a bunch of holes through it. So I'm just waiting to see how it all ends up. Uh, trying to find a right spray nozzle here. There we go. The water coming out of the speck. It's like 90 degrees here today, with all the smoke coming down from Canada. And all that great, you know what? So what I did was I. Use peat moss on the bottom of here, mixed uh, the potting soil with it, then put more potting soil in it. Uh, what I'm going to do now is get this thing soaking wet, uh, as wet as I can, get it all wet, let it drain out a little bit, calm down, then put it, uh, the plants in with the bone meal and uh, uh, blood meal or worm meal, whatever you want to call it, and then set them in there, get them wet again, then cut, wet the straw, and then we can let them just sit there and grow, just like we do the other ones. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna just make sure Everything we got in here is good and wet, which you wouldn't think would take that long. But when you got to go this thick all the way down, you got to figure that's uh, eight to ten inches of soil right there. That's got to get in. So I'm probably going to put a little bit more on here and not waste the cabin. I can see some water coming out of the bottom now, finally, of this uh, container. And believe me, the holes, you can come out the holes, but there's a huge crack in the bottom. Once I get this wet, it's going to sit there a little while, because underneath, if I was just to lift it right up, it would just uh, split right apart. That's how much is in there. So what I want to do is get this peat moss open here. And uh, I want to open it up just a little more in there. Try to use this a little more than that. And yeah. You know what? Just one a little bit. You get a little. You don't get a lot. Get a mess. Uh, trying to dump that out there. So, right as far as that goes. So, the whole bucket is more or less wet now, down and below. For me, don't really hose. So I'm going to do the same thing with this here now. Get it kind of leveled out, and I'm going to wet it, and then I'll be able to plant my plants in here the way I want to. And this is really nice because it's a it's a potting soil, but it's almost like a like a mulch, which is wild. It's just like mulch you would put around here. I don't know if it's better or worse, but I just know soil uh, mulch. Works real good and growing a lot of stuff too, so it's a real good mixture we got with this thing. I just have to let it really run down here and get soaked. And to be heavy, I'm just going to have to hold on through the bottom of her. Try to get her sit in a solid spot where it's not going to move for a while. And a little under to the different seven types of sweet potatoes I got. Red and orange, red and white, brown and orange, brown and white. 
I couldn't tell them all to you right now. I got a ton of sweep trays I've never done before. And they were all ground with slips. I grew them all slipped up and a couple bubble guards I got. And uh, that's it. So I really like these. I have to see who I got these shipped from. I can't remember, but they really came in good shape. I was very, uh, you can see them. They're kind of fresh and they're in good shape. And they're Marik Marisaki purple potatoes. And it's just three slips, like I said. So if I can ever get this thing open without uh, breaking everything up, I'll be pretty happy. But it is a wrapping mess of plastic. But they want to really keep them. This is probably the best one I've ever ordered of these things online. I've ordered other ones before that I've seen come wrapped with uh, this much care before. So what I want to do is these are just slips, like I said. So what we want to do is, you see it's wet all the way through now from what I did. What we want to do is get three different holes in here, deep enough for those the slip roots to go all the way down in, right? Which are right there, which is in good shape. And then, let alone they raped in plant, no, raped, Jesus, wrapped in plastic, but they're also in this soil, which is really nice that they got with it. Um, the next thing is, now that we have all that going like that, uh, we want to get a, some worm castings here, some earthworm castings. And a little bit in each hole, right? Get that, get that stuff off to a real good start. And of course, the nice calcium and potassium together, which is big stuff for this stuff, is to get the bone meal in there, right? So it's got a good place to start and really, really kick itself in. Okay, so a little bit of bone meal in each one, a little bit of worm castings in each one. Then we want to take just a little bit of the dirt they shipped it in with the roots that are around this, right? Pop it right down on in there. Now you would say, that don't look too healthy to me, Jeff. It was kind of soggy, and well, you'd be soggy too if you were in a box shipped from overseas or wherever it came from, like no matter from Hawaii or somewhere out west. You would kind of look like that too, but Matter of what are they will uh they'll spruce right up again and come come back to the life. Here's another one's got some decent roots on it, which is nice. You can see them roots. They're uh good three inches long, a little bit of the dirt it came with. Right? We're gonna pop them roots right down in the hole there, get them nice and straight down in there. So we'll have that growth spurt to go in there. Alright, that's two. Get it down, try to get some of the air out of it a little bit. Then we have our third one here, which is our last one. And we're going to get rid of that paper. Get the rest of our dirt that it was shipped with so it has some of its natural dirt around its roots. Right? And like I said, this is probably the best. I've had them shipped not years ago before I did my own slips, but I mean even bubble guards and stuff before I started doing my own slips or the red ones. I used I uh Used to get them shipped to me, and uh, certain ones. Bow guards, I didn't have to. I'm sorry, I'm telling you a story. But other ones, I had to get shipped to me if I wanted to try them. And uh, by the time they got to you, I'll be honest with you, they were like a stick, and they were uh, kind of like a stick, and they were dried out, and uh, you, you didn't think they were gonna really make it. So I'm kind of holding that up, holding that one up to get the water all down there around that one plant, right? And then we want to get down in there, all around them fertilizers and everything we put in there, now the water's down, right? So the next thing we want to do is get ourselves a good, good set of straw in here, right? Everybody say, what's all the straw for, Jeff? Well, believe it or not, as soon as I get it up here, the biggest thing with straw is to keep everything from drying out in the hot weather. Believe it or not, it keeps it from being scorched by the sun. Keeps the plants growing much healthier and better. So you can see the three of them up right now. So I got more 
more straw here I bought up in the garden area anyway, so I'm going to use her on up here and get her in here nice and thick. And try to wash this off a little bit and keep the straw off of those. I mean, it really doesn't matter. It's going to all come the way we want it anyway. It'll eventually grow. So we, we got enough straw there to go now. All right. Wash off the hands a little bit. And then we're going to grab this little guy here, this plant. All right. Got the three leaves and part of it off. Going to get that straw all wet around that area. Let the straw set down on there. Then we can lay the leaves out. Same here. The straw all wet here, so the straw's laying right down on top. Okay, that one's spread out. Then we have this one here. This one has three leaves too. You never know by the way the straw kind of took over. But I want to get all wet in here, all around this straw. Huh? Straw just acts as a, like I said, a temperature. Uh, keeps them from getting too overheated, but also. Uh, allows the dirt from getting dried out and keeps from getting overheated. It does a lot of like these leaves to stay a certain way if I could with the sun, but sometimes you don't always get your wish. Because this one's sometimes they kind of do what they want to do. And then you get them straightened out and the wind picks them up. Eventually they'll all just go the way you want them to. But you can see right there's just three uh, Marisaka potatoes right there. So they're all ready to go. I'll just let that dry out. Wash off that edge a little bit. And like I said, I just spray painted this maybe an hour or so again. And I just let it let spray paint dry off a little bit. And the only reason I spray painted this tub was to keep the uh, keep the sun out of it some. Let these potatoes grow. So that's it for those now. This weighs with all that water in it. 80 pounds now. I'm telling you, it's, it's incredibly heavy right now. But... We're not worried about it because we're going to let it sit there and kind of drain down. Then we're going to move it to where we're going to finally going to sit it and get underneath of it where it's cracked so we don't let it get any worse. And then we'll be able to go from there for its final destination of sitting. So these are the, like I said, the Mercasas. And what I bought was the purple outside and the purple inside type. That's what I supposedly bought. But I'll take the purple with the white. It don't matter. It's just... I was told that these uh, purple sweet potatoes, even though I don't eat them, are really, really good. Now from here, we're going to wet show you the other potatoes that didn't look too good when I put them in after they were wet and month, month and a half ago. Uh, these will perk right up, trust me, after they or two in the sun. Plus all this rain we've had here recently, it's been like a, uh, uh, it's been like a rainforest here. It's just been incredible. I'm going to pop this camera off the stand. We're going to go look at a few other things to show you where we're going right now and some things we got planted. So if we go from there, we're going to come over here real good. Real good. Sometimes you you talk and you don't know what you're saying. That, <clears throat> I think that's part of it. I just want to show you what we got. I, I got these all coming up now. I put these in the other night because I already got the yellow um, patty pans. So now I got the white patty pans coming in, and I got the yellow uh, cucumbers, and I got, um, trying to think what the third thing was I put in there. Now without my glasses, I can't read anything. But it's another type of uh, squash type. I think it's a butternut I put in there, butternut squash. And these are barely coming up, but these are yellow tomatoes, which I already think I have. I should have moved these clothes. My wife was drying here out of the way. But it happens. Um, and some of this I already got doing, but I'm getting this ready for the second level because even though I'm growing great right now, I'm going to get these into other barrels either this weekend or next weekend, and then they're going to be put into bigger barrels, and they'll grow bigger. And then, like if you see the peach trees, don't go be see like that cucumber there. I had just put that in two weeks ago, and you see the size of it now. Now, you see the tendrils and the arms all growing off it, but it's not going to be a uh, putting any cucumbers, nothing. It's got a flower and all that, but it's just, it's, it's grown amazing. You look at this. This didn't have maybe one little tiny rum with tomato on it, and must be eight or ten of them right down in there now. 
and it's growing good. It's still flowering, so I got that because, like I told you before, the Roma tomatoes are for making the tomato sauces and all that good stuff. Uh, lemon tree. Look at the difference in that lemon tree. Struggled this winter. Struggled early this spring, but it's looking real good now. And I've kept up with uh, fertilizer, so we're good that way. Uh, where I wanted to go was I wanted to go. Back here, wherever these uh, sweet potatoes back here by the garden. See, uh, just to show you how much is going on. But, um, see, you can see them, see them dark right there. The dark right there. Uh, if you can see them in there real good, them dark ones right there. That's the blueberries that are raspberries are really starting to kick now. But the blueberries get dark like that. They're the ones that are. Get ready to go the green beans and pole beans over there. I have to put up a trellis for them because they're getting uh, crazy. And that's the gray zucchini, which I cut some, two more out last night. You can see those sweet potatoes going right there. And that's just potatoes, potatoes, and then another potato. There, but that's the sweet ones. One of the sweet potato barrels there. I don't know if you can see into this strawberry. I'm going to post some pictures later. But that little red strawberry there. But I pulled some out here the last couple of days that are good. Two inches wide, two inches high, two inches thick. Just these strawberries this year are just amazing. And by looking at it, all this uh, watermelon and uh, different types of melons I got growing here, they're all growing, and they take a long time to just get moving. You know, just leafing, and you can see all them start going up the trellis now everywhere. Everything's starting to move higher and higher. I pulled. Two or three more yellow squash out of here last night. And I'll be posting some of them pictures. Like tortilla slash uh, vegetable roll-ups for the family last night. Along with some potatoes. Everything was out of the garden. Cooked out of the garden. Except for um, the tortillas. And uh, they just went crazy over it. Wish I ate it, but I don't. Got another. See there, we got a cucumber right there. There wasn't even anything here the other day. See if I got any more right here when I'm looking. There we go. And what they tell me, I'm not a cucumber, I'm a pickle eater. Once I put them in dill, I love making dill pickles. Well, I don't love it, but I mean, I make them because I get so many cucumbers normally. But, um, trying to see what I got here. This is not, yeah, it's big enough. They tell me the cucumbers who eat them, uh, they tell me that they're much better when they're smaller for their uh, for taste and the way they are for them. So I'm going to go on with what they tell me is their opinion. Uh, now, when I'm making dill pickles, I like them better because I don't have to cut as much. They fit better in the jars and the sauce that I boil all together everywhere. Uh, they do better for me. That way, when they're smaller, i got to kind of do a little more with them to make some magic work to get them all in there. There's another one there. But years ago, I didn't know it. and I grew cucumbers till like the two you saw last week that were just, ah, these mosquitoes from all this rain. Uh, they just got crazy, crazy big. That's a word. Just huge. And, uh, yep, there's another one. What a fun one. So, like I said, the cubes are going. Everything's going. I think that's enough for picking out of there for tonight. Wasn't even planning on doing that. I was going to come back to come back to something else, but plus the one in my pocket. I already got the green beans the other night. Let me put these uh, uh, cucumbers over here for now, so I can. Do some other stuff. We'll be doing. We'll be fertilizing that corn this weekend with the tassels that are on top, and that's something good for everybody to learn. Uh, yeah, and this part of the garden's growing great. Uh, it got so wet, I had to pull some stuff and throw it out. It was rotten in there, but the stuff I could save, I pulled a big. Uh, I guess you call it a basket or a bowl. You can see the other crazy zucchini going on down in there. Um, so this stuff actually even needs some somebody. See these tassels here? They're on top of this corn, I give it about another week or two. They turn a little brown. 
All I do is shake this corn all of them. And all those little seeds go down inside here. You can see where the corn's starting to grow right inside of there. Them tassels sitting there, and that's what uh, puts the female and the male part of the plant together. Makes that corn go crazy. So what I was going to show you is when we were talking about sweet potatoes a little bit ago. I'm talking about the size of them and all that different stuff. Um, eh, something ate that one. Um, we were talking about it. Um, not getting ready, but they're hot weather plants. So you see them now. See how much they're coming out of them barrels right now. You can see that's the regular potatoes which I'll be pulling out in the next week or two. They're growing back. See the peppers I told you I planted in there? Peppers are starting to come up just in time now for hot weather. So I'll be pulling those potatoes out of there probably this week, just the stems this weekend. And then give them a good week or two sitting there in the ground. And then I'll pull them out and then I'll let the peppers grow. Uh, but look at these, all these sweet potatoes here. They're just now starting to take over everything out here as they need to. You can see the butternut squash growing down there. I got four or five of them growing on there right now. The patty pans are still one or two growing on there, but I pulled another one off that was probably, you'll see the picture I post on Facebook. It's a good six to eight inches wide. It was pretty big. Um, everything's just going crazy, but like I said, then you pick. Then you got to wait a little while for stuff to come back. The tomatoes are all getting in the middle back there. They're all getting into that size of uh, getting ready to pick. And get to those sizes I want, but like I said, they won't go grow a little more, and they won't get all the um, matureness out of them until uh, generally um, late July, early August. They'll really start coming in all of August and all of jeez uh, um, September and October. You'll still be pulling. Means that these regular, see these regular potatoes here, they're still healthy, but they're starting to fall apart. See them back there? Starting to die out. I got another little bucket of them down there. They're starting to fall apart, but these sweets over here, they're just getting into their, that bucket of sweets over here. If I pull these regular potatoes back out of the way here, see that? Them sweets are just ready to explode with all the other barrels. So we should have a record with sweet potatoes this year. And regular potatoes, I'd have to count over here, but looks like them purple beans are getting pretty close too. Um, with regular potatoes, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Looks like we got about seven. Seven, um, eight. No one over there, sorry. Eight buckets, or it might be nine, it might be another one. Nine, they're not as big as a sweet potato container or whatever, but. Like nine of them of the different, you know, Yukons and uh, Regnorankos. Um, I'm trying to think of the third one. Oh, they're called uh, Purple Magic Mollies or whatever. So they'll all be coming up here relatively soon. Like I said, the main thing is I haven't put any water, which I don't need. The ground's still soaking away from all the water we had. I haven't put any water in here for, I haven't turned it on for a week. Yes, we've had all the rainstorms, but I'm just saying probably not tomorrow, but probably Saturday. We don't have anything in between then. Then I will start going back to the every uh, two days or so of uh, water. I'm not just going to see if I can get a hold of it. See what this hmm a little sour. Let me try this one. Mhm. Mm a little sour. Yeah. But. I was telling you, look at those pole beans. They're starting to come up, so i got to pull those. Get a little uh, trellis right here, boom, to sit down here so I can get these pole beans trellising up six to eight foot in there, and they'll be going. Uh, didn't see that. Oh, there's another more potatoes, and I think there's some of those two orange buckets. I just never took them out. But I have to take that garlic out there. It's starting to look really shitty, even though it's supposed to be in there another month. But I did start it later this season, so we'll see. But a lot of these paints, I gotta get out the old broccoli's, get the florets out. Um, kale can stay, but the lettuce is all gotta go. Uh, there's a lot that's gotta come out, and then I'm just gonna put some stuff in here in the meantime. And I got the stuff. I'll use some of these barrels for the stuff I got up there that I showed you earlier. 
So it's just switching in and out and all that. And then another two months from now, when everything's dying off, the melons and stuff are dying off and stuff that won't grow anymore, it starts getting a little cool at night and just a little bit warm during the day. So when you go back and you start putting your broccoli, your cauliflower, your lettuce in, then you can grow them all the way up until about the beginning of November. All right, guys, I appreciate you being out here with us today and checking in on the channel. Um, but just wanted to let you know, garden's doing real, real good. Uh, still not to that uh, jungle stage, but we're about halfway there. But it's uh, had that hot weather, it really started going good. Then we got a lot of rain, it kind of went away. But like I always say, always welcome to Jeff's Garden. And any questions you got, we answer them all the time. I see you guys put them out there. I appreciate it. Thank you. Nice comments, questions you have. It's, it's really appreciative. And, We'll just keep moving along, keep going there. So we're gonna check out for now. Don't forget to go out to YouTube to Jeff's Garden Tips and Jeff's Vegetable Gardening and Containers, Facebook at Jeff Gardening, Instagram at Jeff's uh, Gardening Tips, and um, Twitter at uh, Jeff's Vegetable. All right, guys, we shall be back in a couple of days, maybe this holiday weekend, to pull up some potatoes and do a few other things. Oh, there's some good red strawberries down there. All right, guys, have a great night. See you.